Welcome everybody, Red G Fox. And today we are talking about the great Red Fox. I'm very excited for this episode as we get to our Friday fun facts where we try to show anything and talk about anything that you might not know about this character, this actor, this episode, or the show. And today, like I said, we've gone through a couple greats, including Damon Wilson. This week, we are working on the one and only Red Fox. Right, Red? Yeah. It's it, There's so many things in here I did not know, right? I've seen so many of his shows, even shows I can't remember the name and have a hard time trying to find and look up. We'll cover those later. But... There's some things in here that are great, great facts that you might not even know about. Hopefully you learn. That's the point of the show, right? So let's get right to it. Red Fox, he lived, he passed away at the age of 68. We're not going to dwell on any more of that. This is a happy thing and, and we're going to talk nothing but positive about what Red was and what he did. His actual name was John Elway, Elroy, John Elroy Sanford. And his dad's name was Red G. Fox. And so was his younger brother, Red G. Fox, not Red G., uh, Fred G. Sanford. Forget that Fox stuff. Fred G. Sanford was his father's name, and it was his younger brother's name, Fred uh, G. Sanford Jr. Now, we know throughout the show history, they never say in the show what the G stands for. Goo goo gaga, great guy, all these different things. And it's one of the, there's a, such so many great jokes in Sanford and Son, and that's one of the gags, is what does the G actually stand for? Now, I've looked this up in the past, and the G for his dad and his brother, since he was a junior, the G stood for Glenn. So, on the show, they never say it, but that's most likely what it stands for. I know they say Grady. That's Lamont's middle name, Grady. But then they contradict themselves. I, I, I don't even want to get into that. Let's get back to it. So, the G stood for Glenn. His father, he was there. He was with them. And then uh, he left the family in the 1930s. And uh, John... Fred, Red, I'm going to probably call him Red throughout the whole show, but uh, it, it, he wasn't called Red at this time, but uh, Red was raised by his mother, who is actually half uh, Seminole. I did not know that. You know, it might make for the, the tan complexion and the red hair, but was Seminole, and in that, his her name was Mary Hughes. She actually outlived him by several years after his passing in 1991, so that's something there a lot of people might not know including the seminal part. That's pretty wild. So he was part Indian as well. On July 27th. Now this is a show some might have heard of. I only have heard of this show that uh, Red was on in his younger years because of an episode of Twilight Zone. Have you ever seen the Twilight Zone episode where the one guy lives in like, like it's a boarding house and, and he's an older dude and he gets, uh, he's sick of TV. He hates the TV and he gets the, he pulls the radio out and he starts hearing classic shows back from when he was younger. And one of them was the Major Bose Hour. And it says right here that uh, Red actually appeared on that on July 27th, 1939. He was on the Major Bose Hour uh, radio show. And so when, so when you think about that, you're like, hey, that's pretty wild. Never, I never knew that. Pretty cool thing. One of the first things he ever went out and did. So that's 39. Now we get to the 40s. And he's on East Coast. And he is doing uh, all sorts of things with comedy. And he's... But before that, before he gets to the comedy, he starts out in the 1940s. He became great friends. Some of you probably already know this. I've heard this story. I always forget it, though. But he became great friends with a man named Malcolm Little. Later on, who went on to become Malcolm X. They met in Harlem at the, what's it called? The Jimmy's Chicken Shack, where they were both dishwashers. And both of them had the red hair tint. So this is how he got his name Red. Some say it's from his Indian reddish type complexion. Some say it's from his red hair. But they both had nicknames in this in the Jimmy, the Chicken Shack. Was Red's was because he comes from Chicago, uh, Chicago Red. And Malcolm was Detroit Red obviously from Detroit. So that was their nicknames on there. Hey, Chicago Red. Hey, Detroit Red. And one would go on to be Malcolm X, a huge influence on his society, his community, and of that era and the huge civil rights movement. And the other one would be a huge, just laughter and bring joy to thousands and hundreds and millions of people. And yeah, what are the odds? What are the odds two powerful people were washing dishes? Now, later on in Malcolm's autobiography book, he did say that Red was the funniest dishwasher on the earth. And you, you gotta admit that. I mean, how many other great comedians have been dishwashers? And you gotta admit right there that he's probably knew what he was talking about. Now we get 
oh, one thing, this was an interesting fact I did not know. This is pretty, I mean, I don't think you can get away with it now, but he got called for the draft, Red, uh, Red Fox. He got called to go for the draft and they have to give you their physical. One thing he did is before his physical, a little bit of time before, he ate a bar, half a bar of soap. So he took half a bar and ate half of it. Probably made him sick as well, but what it does is it gives you uh, heart palpitations. So they, the army, when they did the physical, they felt he wasn't healthy enough to go, and he it got, actually got out of having to go to the draft and serve in World War II. So, I mean, if he had not done that, who knows if he ever made it back. There might not be no such thing as Samperton and Son. That'd be, uh, yeah, that'd be horrible. They could cast someone else. There's no one better than Red, Red Fox for this. But yeah, that was a pretty smart move by him. I wonder who taught him that. Hmm. All right, let's get to the next one. Now, this is where he started touring. Red was a huge success on the East Coast as he was going and doing comedy shows, all sorts of different things, going to clubs, doing a lot of it, and stand-up co comedy. If you've heard any of his acts, I don't listen to him too often. I haven't heard of him. He's very, they say, raunchy, and he, he gets really into it, and it was a huge success. I do apologize. I am sweating like crazy. I can't turn on the fan or it makes too much noise, and it is hot in here. I don't got AC. <laughs> So if you see me do this, I do apologize. It's hot in this thing. So then what happened was that he ended up getting a shot to come out to the West Coast. And he went out and he was out in LA and touring there. So when you get the East Coast and the West Coast, that's so good at that time too, to get a good reputation and get a lot of people talking about you, which was happening. He ended up going to Vegas on the strip and he was one of the first ever black comics to perform for a huge, large group of white audience members. And he ended up getting a big contract there. They signed him there. And he ended up doing so many different albums, right? We just talked about the comedy. He did a bunch of different comedy albums for dozens of different labels. And he got really big. And in that, it became, to this day still, it's a cult favorite. People actually just, if you can get a hold of one, they're worth a lot. And they are some of the best stuff out there for if you like that kind of comedy. So that is pretty much his early life. He's had so many other things, but we're going to cover just what is... Maybe something you didn't know, something you didn't learn, or something you can learn, and hopefully you are. Now let's get to the favorite part, the reason we're all here, and that is Red was cast as Fred G. Sanford, and of course we know it was his idea to name it that, in Sanford and Son. And if it weren't for that, we wouldn't even be talking about it right now. You wouldn't be talking to me, I wouldn't be talking to you. It, present, it premiered on NBC. I actually had someone once say it was ABC, because I did a, a thing on it before in the past, how the, the Brady Bunch, you know, Fred Sanford killed the Brady Bunch because his ratings were so big at one year in, in NBC that it, the, the Brady Bunch, it, no one was, the ratings were bad and they canceled the show. And a big part of it is uh, Sanford and Son, Red Fox. And someone's like, oh no, they were both on ABC. No, Fred went to, a Red went to ABC later, we'll cover that. But yeah, it, it on January 14th, 1972, and it ran for six seasons until March 25th, 1977. This is something we all know, what a huge impact that Red had in, in entertainment, period. You're going to hear people later that he, who were a huge influence in their lives. But the kind of person he was is that he would get his friends these roles. Let's go through a list of people you might not know were on the show specifically because Red Fox got them there. He, he insisted, he said, let's get him here. Let's get him there. Now we know some of the main ones, but there was a couple on here I didn't even know and I'll tell you. So here are a list of greats from the show that Red is responsible for getting on. Number one, LaWanda Page. We know that. If you don't know that, go check on, uh, on another channel. I'll even put the link in the uh, comment section where I, I talk about a, a huge thing, uh, the history of LaWanda Page, how she got on that show. I guess I can do it again for this channel, but LaWanda Page, they were friends. They were part of the nightclub act. That's where they met, you know? And so it goes back to where they've been friends for years. And he said, we got to get her on this show. And she actually was going to, they got her for the part. And then they changed, one of the producers like, no, nah, it's not going to work. He changed her mind. This is kind of what I cover, but they changed her mind. And Red, Red said, no, you need to get her on here because every woman in the country is going to love this, this lady. They'll be screaming in Watts if you, if you don't get this lady on here. And... He was 100% right. He even said that if you don't let her on here, if you fire her, I'm walking. I'll leave. That's how determined, that's how great of a friend he was and a person he was and a visionary to see that. I mean, the characters I list right here are going to be like, oh my gosh, that's one of my favorite. Oh, that's one of my favorite. He saw that. The other, the producers, them, they didn't do it. He did. And none better than Esther. And the chemistry they had was so great. 
Lawanda Page on there. I can't think of Sanford and Son the same without Aunt Esther and Lawanda Page. Next was Melvin, Slappy White. We talked about him last week on our Friday Fun Fact. He only appeared in one season, five episodes, but he had some very memorable lines. Uh, go look up the last week on it. Ed, uh, Edwin Brown, he is... Edwin Brown is any show, any channel I have. He's my number one fan, always commenting. He has the best information. He's been around, he knows what he's talking about, but he commented, so he posts some of uh, Slappy's funniest lines from the show. So if you wanna check out some of his funniest lines, go back and check that out in last week's episode in the comment section. But Slappy White, another friend. All these guys are friends. Now, I didn't know this connection. I'm curious, I didn't see anything looking it up how they became friends, probably in the comedy circuit, right? All these people he met through nightclubs and comedy circuit. But Gregory Sierra, I did not know that. That I thought that he was just a guy they brought in from the, the TV station, you know, they brought it in. Julio, Julio Fuentes, hey, bye ya. You know, <laughs> I love Julio. I was so disappointed when he left the show. I think he, it's because he got a part on another show. I can't remember what it was, but either way, he, he eventually left and, but he was only there because of Red Fox. I did not know that. and. Thank you for that because Julio, they are so good to. And it doesn't it seem like the best characters are the ones that that uh, Red had con Fred had conflicts with, and none other than Esther. And now you get on there, Julio. <laughs> we can go through whole. I mean, I'll do eventual an episode on Julio, but he is one of my top favorites. And then you get to the next one, Don Bexley, Bubba Bexley, of course. He's the one who came in and kind of took over for the Melvin role, season two. I did mention last week why we believe Melvin left after one season. You can go check that out if you want. But Bubba, I want my daddy's records. I mean, you can't get better than Bubba. Don Bexley. Then uh, Bree Richards. Now, she was only on season one, and that was Aunt Ethel. Very kind. She was funny. Remember the one where Fred hits the numbers and... She's given the sob story because she needs money. Get I liked, she was more of a kind-hearted, better aunt, not someone who's going to, I mean, she could talk smack, but not so much like Esther was. And, but she got on there because, I did not know that as well, that, you know, Red Fox got her on there because of that. You had Stymie Beard, who was Otis Little John, who, he came like in season, was it four, with the pool, pool table, and then the one where Gray, uh, Grady took over while Red was holding out for his contract. He was there when he, he goes, I got the money for the, uh, the, the income tax or whatever. And then Fre Grady almost has a heart attack with that one. But yeah, he's great, Simon Beard. Simon Beard also appeared, and if, for those who don't know, most do, that is um, Stymie from Little Rascals. You know, the original Little Rascals. So it's great to see him at, at an older age in this. He was also in the one in the, uh, I wanna say the courtroom scene where he's in there and I demand justice. He also appeared in an episode of Sanford. If you've ever watched the show Sanford, we'll cover that for a bit in a little, coming up but one of my all-time favorite favorite scenes in that is he goes to dinner at George's a very fancy restaurant in Beverly Hills him and uh, his girl and they go uh, Mrs. Lewis and when they're there as he walks in he sees his table and he's like hey and he's listing the real names they're all actors and Stymie Beard's one of them he's like hey there's this guy and hey there's so-and-so hey and there's Stymie Beard from Little Rascals and he's saying that and they're all sitting there and they're showing close-up talking and then the last guy he goes I don't know who that guy is though and <laughs> And it's Sammy Davis Jr., the most recognized out of all of them. And Fred's like, I don't know who that guy is. And it, it's so, that is one of the all-time like favorite from Sanford. Not Sanford, but from Sanford. Just just simple stuff like that where you're like, and then Sammy Davis Jr. stops and kind of gives a glare like, you know, he knows the joke, but he's trying to play it like, did you just say you don't know who I was out of all these guys? He was directing that episode, that's why. So that that's a, another thing about Stymie Beard. So he did appear on multiple shows. Thank you, Red, for getting him on there. Then we get to... Of course, Leroy and Skillet. We know those guys. They were big time comedians. That's how they got to know them. Getting them on there was pure genius. When Fred needed a group of friends, we want the three degrees. We want, those were the guys to bring. So I mean, or when they, he goes out and they think he's on a date with Julio's mom and he's like, oh, you with the Cucaracha? <laughs> oh man, I could talk about these episodes all night. Yeah, so they were on there. They're two of the best. Thank you very much, Red. And then finally, this I did know on interviews on YouTube, watching stuff with Pat Morita. Remember, Achu Gazuntite. Pat Morita got in there because he got he met Red in the comedy circuit, and he was he even said Pat's like, hey, he was like my uh, my mentor, and he was a big influence on me. And Red said, hey, why don't you come on? We'll get you a part on the show. And he's like, he had never worked TV. I this was before Happy Days, I want to say. And he's like, uh, you know, I, I guess I never I never act, you know, I haven't done anything like this. And he's like, yeah, it'll be fine. 
and once again, they butt heads. And every time it's a person where, you know, he, he goes back and forth with them, the lines are top notch. And remember when he tells, the, one of the, my favorite lines when he tells uh, Achu, he comes in with the mont and he's like, man, why are you hanging out with him? You want to get yellow jaundice? And then they the big laugh and then Pat Morita Achu, he's like, what do you got, the Black Plague? And then he gives high five to the wall. <laughs> so good, they played so well. And who saw that? Who saw all of this? All the funny lines we got, everything we just said was Red Fox. Red Fox brought those guys in and he knew what a visionary, what a loyal friend, and what a great businessman. And how unselfish. He Look at all the lines we talked about where the other guys got the great parts. Julio, Pat, Mer you know, uh, Achu. Who else was on here? It, it's Stymie Beard, whatever. They all had funny lines where Fred didn't use them as props. He used them as equals. And they came in and got their big breaks and it helped all of them in their careers. You know, heck, Greg Sierra, I've seen him and he did his own shows, but he's been in multiple episodes of MacGyver. I've seen him in other things. He His whole acting career, you know, it all stems from something like this and it all starts with a friend and that was Red Fox. So hat, hat off to Red for all that. Now let's get to after Sanford and Son. This is going longer than I thought. I talked too much about the episodes, I apologize. Red had a variety show on ABC, as we mentioned. As the show ended, he gets that from ABC. And if you want to know the history between DeMond and Red and how everything went down when the show ended, go look at our first Friday Fun Fact with DeMond Wilson. We cover that in there. We even talk about the last time they both saw each other and what happened. So you can go check that in there. But in here, we'll just say, hey, he had a variety show. It didn't last long. It failed after within one season, so many episodes. It wasn't a big hit for him. Uh, he did get still paid money, but it got canceled. And then they even tried to start up Sanford again and without De Demond Wilson, Lamont, he wasn't gonna be in it. But to me, they had Cal, they brought Nathaniel Taylor's Rollo. Go watch that show. It does not have the same love like that Sanford and Son, but it was, it was uh, decent stories, great writing, and just good timing comedy. I mean, these guys are at their best. When you see Red Fox, he's out there taking the young pills and dancing, and he, he's got his uh, Evelyn as his girlfriend. I actually, actually, a whole side note, I love Evelyn 10 times more than Donna. Donna was great, but how many episodes where we see Donna get mad or Donna get fussy or, uh, you know, flipping out, getting jealous, like the one where he's trying to graduate high school, the very last episode, she's yelling at him and flipping. She was too high-tempered, man. It was, Evelyn was the nicest, sweetest character for Fred. And in that show, you see it. That is the way it should be. So as we go, as we go through, he did that. That only lasted two years, to my disappointment, because I love that show. If you have not seen Sanford, look it up. It's on Amazon. You can buy the DVDs. Now, Amazon only has like 12 episodes when there's like in the 20s. And they don't have Dinner at George's. They don't have the one that Sammy Davis Jr. guest stars as a as himself as an entertainer. Oh my gosh, when Fred's doing the, acting like he's trying to play the bass and Sammy's trying to do a rehearsal and he look, that is one of the, that's the best episode probably of the series with Sammy Davis Jr. And Fred's trying to imitate him. Goochie coon, goochie coon. If you've seen that one, if you haven't, you don't know what I'm talking about, you think I'm crazy, go look it up it, or find it, find a way to see it. One of the best ever. So they did that, then that, that was gone after a few years. Now, there was another show this is what I was talking about. I don't know the name of it. It was, he owned like a restaurant. He had like a, a Latina waitress who was funnier than ever. She was a professional comedian. Like a kid came into it who's probably like 17 year old girl who was kind of like a, a living on the street and she comes and joins the show and Fred helps take care of her like a mentor, like a father figure. And Nathaniel Taylor, my man, he's back. Nathaniel Taylor again is back with him. And uh, it's a great, to me, it's a great show. The first season. The first season was good. Then I think the second season, something happened. Uh, the, I think the girl was gone. Like there was changes to the cast and not explained. It's like, how do you take a, a, a recipe that is working and could gradually get better and go, hey, this is kind of good. Let's just drop everything. And, just, and, and it didn't work. I remember seeing a little bit of the second season. Could have been the third season. I can't remember how many they did. But I said, this isn't the same show. This person's gone, this person's gone. The, Red's acting different. I just didn't like it. You took something that was good. And I, I, if you know the show, please comment below so I can find it because I haven't been able to find it. And it used to be on TV and I recorded it years ago and just for that first season and it's gone now. So if you know, please help me out. But he was in that and then after that show, then he did uh, a few seasons, Then he, uh, but then Nathaniel Taylor. This is later in his career. He did do Harlem Nights with Eddie Murphy and I, I think Eddie Murphy wrote it, directed it, produced it. And that was a huge hit for him, for Red and it come back. And he also did uh, The Royal Family with Della Reese. That was a big one too. That was a popular show until his passing. 
And uh, we're not going to talk about that. But yeah, that was the last show he ever did, The Royal Family. So he's making a comeback at 68. He could still, man, dang it. You wish it could have lasted just a little longer, man. Five more years, ten more years, you know. I guess there's never enough time. But we'll, we're going to end with this because this to me has been, I hope you learned something out of this. I hope you've also taught me something. Put something in comments below of something I might have missed, something I might have forgot or even got wrong. But And give me the name of that show. But the, Richard Pryor, he said Red Fox was a huge influence in my life of comedy and everything I did, a huge inspiration. And Richard Pryor went on to be one of the best. Eddie Murphy, once again, a gigantic, that was a mentor, that was a, you know, a comedy figure that he can look up to. We know what Eddie Murphy is. Chris Rock, Chris Rock said he, he even said, my parents used to listen to the records and he would overhear it, then go to school the next day and repeat all the stuff like he was the funny guy taking Red's uh, comedy work and the kids thought he was hilarious. So that's him getting started in performing in front of the audience, all because of Red. Pat Morita, we talked about him earlier. He said Red was my mentor and got him everything that he got started and helped huge influence and help in his life. And finally, Jamie Foxx. Yes, he spells it with two X's. He even said that he chose his professional surname as Fox as a tribute to the great Red Fox. So look at these guys, man. Comedians who have done hundreds and hundreds of shows, movies, millions of people laughter all because of Red Fox as a huge influence that he doesn't exist. He serves in World War II, and what happens? We, I mean, you never know. It is what it is. It is how life looks, but man, sometimes you never know. We are thankful for what we had and what we got, and six seasons of Sanford and Son, and two seasons of Sanford. Watch them. Like I said, to the day I die, I will always watch them. I will always love them, and they, they can turn me from the grumpiest guy to the giggliest person like a kid laughing my butt off. So I hope you learned something new. Le leave a like. Leave a... Like I always say, Fred G. Fox, and the G stands for give a like and give a subscribe and share it, man. Let's keep making this community grow. Let's continue to keep Sanfordson out there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and we will be talking to you on this Tuesday, coming back with episode breakdown of the fourth episode of the show. All right? Talk to you guys later. Say goodbye, Red. Peace.